Psalms 113, few verses says like this, Praise the Lord, praise O servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, his glory above all the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who dwells on high, who humbles to behold the things that are in heavens and in the earth. He raises the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy out of the ash heap. Let us look to God in prayer. Gracious, loving and living Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, O God, for adding this day in our lives for keeping us sound and safe throughout the past week and very specially giving us the refreshing rest of last night. And gracious God, even as we begin this day, we commit ourselves into your hands. And O oh God, we want to claim your promise which says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of you. And acknowledging your very presence, O oh God, we want to submit ourselves into your hands. We pray, O God, that even as we bring praises to your holy name, let our praises be acceptable in thy sight. And gracious God, even as we go to the breaking of your word, it's our prayer this morning, O God, that you would speak to each one of us. Unto your hands we commit each one of us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Friends, in the beginning of the worship service shall we all rise and sing a beautiful hymn hymn number 55 from the methodist hymnal praise, praise to the lord the almighty the king of creation O my soul praise him for he is thy health and salvation shall we all at this time rise up and sing hymn number 55 from the methodist hymnal <coughs>
friends, we'd like to welcome each one of you to this virtual Sunday worship service. Uh, although we are not congregating in the churches, but uh, wherever we are joining in worshiping God, it's our prayer that God would bless us. I'd like to uh, welcome each one of you to this uh, worship service, and it's our prayer that this worship service will be a very meaningful experience for each one of us. Uh, friends, as we have received the directives from the church authorities, we will not be uh, congregating as a church, but we will continue online worship service throughout the month of July. And so we request you to please uphold uh, our people as they are suffering because of this COVID-19 pandemic. Pray for all those who are suffering, uh, those who have lost uh, their loved ones, those who have been affected by the coronavirus, that God would touch them and heal them. We also at this time request you to pray for our country as the government tries to see that uh, they become a blessing to the people in need. And so, Please uphold our country in your personal and in your family prayers. We at this time uh, would like to thank God for all the answered prayers. We'd like to thank God for the healing that many of us have received. We at this time request you to pray for the people, for our church who are sick, for, uh, people, for our EMC family, that God may sustain us spiritually, mentally, physically, and even emotionally. And these are tough times for us. And uh, as we struggle with the challenges of this pandemic, may God's blessings be upon each one of us that we may be able to face the challenges of COVID-19 very boldly. Uh, at this time, I request you to please uphold uh, following people who celebrate their birthday in this week. Mr. Akhilesh Mabin celebrates his birthday today, that is on the 5th of July. Master Jitin Singh, grandson of Mr. MCJ Singh and Mrs. SM Singh, celebrates his birthday on the 8th of July. Dr. Naveen Ajit Lal celebrates his birthday on the 10th of July. And Mrs. S.M. Singh celebrates her birthday on the 10th of July. Even as our loved ones enter into a new year of their life, let us uphold them in our personal and in our family prayers. The following people who are not well physically, please uphold them in your personal and your family prayers. Dr. K. Theophilus recopes and we pray that you Remember him in your prayers. Uh, Mrs. Jennifer Andrew Pakyanatham, pray for her. Let us pray and uphold Mrs. S. M. Manu. She is in Indore. We pray that you would uh, uphold her in your prayers. Mrs. M. J. Noah, wife of Colonel R. J. Noah, pray, please pray for her. Also remember Dr. Mrs. Salma Netram and Mrs. Rina Lata Williams. Please uphold them in your family and your personal prayers. At this time, as we go to God in prayer, we believe in a God who is uh, the creator of the whole world, who is omniscient, who is omnipotent, and he is our Adonai. He is our healer. And let us look to God in prayer. Let us close our eyes. Let us look to God in prayer. Let us pray. Most gracious, bountiful, living and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh God, for who you are, for you are the creator of the whole world. This morning, O oh God, even as we look around ourselves, as we behold the beautiful creation, thus the, the cruel breeze, the sunshine that we see, and as we relish this beautiful creation, we want to thank you, O oh God, for creating everything so beautifully. We thank and praise you, O oh God, that you are our creator, you are our sustainer, and you are our redeemer, O oh God. We thank and praise you, O oh God, for you created everything so beautifully. 
you created human in your own image and likeness and when human erred and fell into the pit of sin your love did not recede but in your agape love oh god you sent your only begotten son with this promise that whosoever believeth in him would never die but have eternal life gracious god we want to thank you that in jesus christ you have given us abundance of life and you you have carried us through thus far gracious god we want to thank you for all your blessing this morning oh god we want to praise you we want to worship you god for you are the omnipotent god who who is almighty the powerful god we thank you oh god that you are omniscient god for you know everything even before things happen in life and oh god we want to thank you that you are a jehovah jaira god who has provided everything in our life and often times oh god you have provided in abundance and that why oh god we are in surplus this morning oh god we want to thank you for your provision that we enjoy in our life thank you oh god for your protection that we enjoy in our life thank you oh god for being with us guiding us leading us god at this time we specially pray for the world over as it uh, struggles with the challenges of covid-19 pandemic father we pray that you would intervene we as human we have heard oh god but oh god this covid-19 has brought us to our knees this has given us a cognition that we are frail weak people say tiny uh, virus had created havoc in our lives and father this morning we pray that you would intervene in our lives and enable oh god the pandemic would stop that the, the earliest oh god we would may be able to have the antidote and oh god we pray that you would enable us to come out of this pandemic this lockdown and the fall off of this lockdown father we pray that you would bless the world over we specially pray oh god for our own country we thank you oh god for the government and father even as the government machinery takes care of the citizen we pray that you would bless our government we specially pray oh god for our prime minister we pray for our president we pray oh god for all the chief ministers of different states the governors and the bureaucracy into your hands and father we pray for each and every individual on whose shoulder the responsibility is placed to lead and guide this country father we pray that you would bless our country even through our government father this time we specially pray for the church is over irrespective of any denomination we commit them into your hands and father we pray let your church become a blessing a channel of blessing in this time of struggles and challenges father we pray for the methodist church in india we especially want to uphold all the bishops into your hands and pray that you would bless each and every bishop even as they take the the initiative to guide and lead the conferences we especially want to uphold our honorable bishop bishop m a daniel and his leadership to the throne of grace we commit him into your hands thank you god for the decisions he has taken father we pray that you would bless him that he would be able to take proper decisions in this time of crisis father we pray that you would bless him and his leadership father we thank you for his dedication for his commitment and the way he has taken care of each one of us we ask your blessings upon him we at this time specially want to uphold the mp regional conference we pray for our executive secretary we pray you oh god for all the district superintendent of different districts we commit all the pastors into your hands we pray you oh god for all the pastorate committees and the conferences and all the evangelists all over them we pray that you would bless each one of them in this time of chaos and confusion oh god we pray that you would bless each one of us in this time of persecution oh god we will be bold enough to prop- propagate and proclaim your gospel with authority and clarity and boldly father we pray that you would continue to each use each one of us for your glory this morning oh god we very specially want to uphold the english methodist church to the throne of grace we thank you oh god for this very church we thank you oh god for the the long life and ministry of english methodist church you have been a ebenezer 
God who has sustained us thus far and God who has brought us thus far. And we ask your blessings upon the life and ministry of English Methodist Church. Father, we pray that you would bless each one of us. Especially at this time, we want to thank you, God, for each and every pastor who has walked uh, ahead of us. Pray that you would bless this family and bless their ministry. Father, we at this time also pray for our church. We ask your blessings upon our church. We pray, especially want to uphold the pastorate committee to the throne of grace, even as the pastorate committee takes important decisions of life. Pray that you would bless the pastorate committee. We pray for all the organizations of our church. We pray for MYF. We pray for WCS. We especially want to uphold the Sunday school and the children in your hands. Although, God, we are not able to meet, we are not able to worship, we are not able to congregate together. But we know, oh God, that you are there. That even as we worship you, God, in the virtual worship service, you will lead us and guide us. We at this time especially pray for those who are celebrating their birthdays this week. We pray for Akhilesh Mabin. We pray, oh God, for Jitin Singh. We pray for Dr. Naveen Ajit. Lal, and we pray, especially want to uphold Mrs. S.M. Singh through the throne of grace. And we ask your blessings upon them, even as they step into the new year of their life. Father, we pray that you'd carry them through. Thank you, God, that you have been with them throughout the past year. We especially at this time pray for those who are not well physically. We commit them into your hands. We pray for Dr. Theophilus. We pray for Jennifer Andrew Pakinathan. We pray, O oh God, for Mrs. Manu. We pray, O oh God, for Mrs. M.J. Noah. We pray, O oh God, for Mrs. Dr. Salma Netram and Mrs. Rinalata Williams. We commit them into your hands, and Father, we pray that you search with your hand of healing. Touch them, O oh God, in a very special way. Let healing power flow from your body to their body so that every ailment, weakness, and disease be removed in Jesus' name. And God, we pray that we would continue to enjoy the best of health and you bless them and use them mightily we commit our church in giants especially oh god this morning even as we wait upon you we especially want to pray oh god for reverend mrs persis peters as she brings the word to us oh god we pray that you would speak to us even through your servant we commit her into your hands. And once again, O oh Father, committing each one of us, each and every member of the church and the world over into your hands, we sum up all our petitions and the prayers. In the name of the one who taught us, say, while we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, the scripture portion for this morning's meditation comes from the book of Prophet Ezekiel, chapter 28, 1 to 10. Book of Prophet Ezekiel, chapter 28, verses 1. 1 to 10 it says like this the word of lord came to me again saying son of man say to the prince of tyra thus says the lord god because your heart is lifted up you say i am a god i sit in the seat of gods in the midst of seas yet you are a man not a god Though you set your heart as the heart of God, behold, you are wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that can be hidden from you. With your wisdom and with your understanding, you have gained riches for yourself and gathered gold and silver into your treasuries. By your great wisdom in trade, you have increased your riches and your heart is lifted up. Because of your riches. Therefore thus says the Lord your God. Because you have set your heart as the heart of a God. Behold therefore I will bring strangers against you. The most terrible of nations. And they shall draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom. And defile your splendor. 
they shall throw you down into the pit and you shall die the death of the slain in the midst of seas. Will you still say before me who slays you? I am a God, but you shall be a man, not a God, in the hand of him who slays you. You shall die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of alien. For you have spoken, thus says the Lord. Here ends the reading. May the good Lord add his reading to the blessing and understanding of his holy word. Amen. Friends, at this time, as we wait upon the Lord, it's our prayer that God would speak to us. At this time, I'll call upon Reverend Mrs. Persis Peters to come and share God's message to each one of us. Reverend Mrs. Persis Peters, please. Before we listen to the word of God, let's look to God in prayer. Gracious God, we want to thank you and praise you for this morning you have added in our life. Thankful to God for your bounties of our lives, for your grace and mercy, for your love and care. Oh God, we are grateful to you that you have kept us safe and sound and brought us to keep worship you, God. Thankful to God for protecting us from COVID-19 and giving us life and life in abundance. God, as we listen to your word, anoint each and every one of us with the power of your Holy Spirit. So that with your power, we'll be able to understand your word and implement it in our life. With all human limitations, when I also stand over here, I need your presence. I need your anointing spirit upon me. So that with your authority, clarity and power, I'll be able to bring your word to your sons and daughters, which will touch their hearts and minds. Thanking you for everything. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Someone has said that if God wants to judge the nation, God gives a wicked or a bad ruler to the country. Our God is a universal God, even though he chose people of Israel and call them as a chosen race. But throughout the Bible when we see God's oracles through the prophets and God's judgment upon the nations, God's intervention on the nations and also God's forgiveness to the non-Israelite nations speaks about universality, universality of God and at the same time that God is a God who judges all the nations and he is a God of the whole world. The text which is read to us, Ezekiel chapter 28, speaks of a city named Tyre. And today when we try to understand this text, Ezekiel chapter 28 verses 1 to 10 and even the preceding verses and subsequent verses, we will definitely understand what God's plans are for our lives. If you want to go into the backdrop of this text, we have to understand that people of Israelites were in exile, in Babylonian exile. And before going into exile, they considered themselves very pious, very religious. And they were so proud of the splendor and grandeur of the holy temple. And also, they were proud of the city Jerusalem. It was known as a city of God or city of temple. And everybody knew, the whole world knew about this temple of God. Everybody knew about this God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Even the matriarchs, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel and Rhea. And they knew that there is a powerful God who resides in this temple. They were following religious rituals very piously. All the appointed festivals were celebrated with great enthusiasm. And they were enjoying prosperity. They were enjoying success in their life. 
And when everything was going on good with them, at that moment they thought or they credited all the prosperity or the success or everything what they had, they credited it to their own righteousness that because we are righteous, we are receiving all these blessings from God. But God here wanted to give a new meaning to the religion. He wanted to tell what true religion is all about. It is beyond temple. It is beyond worship place. It is not just the religiosity is confined to the religious places where you are, or to the rituals, or to the festivals, or to the sacrifices offered at the altar, but it is beyond that. God wanted his people, not just now, but also right from the beginning, even if we go to the Deuteronomic laws, the Levitical laws, God always spoke for the poor people, for the oppressed, and God was always against the oppression of the poor people and the exploitation of the weaker sections of the society. And even through the law, through the oracles, and through different prophets, God was time and again telling people that your religi religiosity does not confine to your religious places, but also to your families, to your, even to your uh, communities, your societies, and also to the nation. And God saw a dual nature or double standard life which the people were living. And because of that, they were taken into exile because of their own sins, they were taken into exile. And God also gave them into exile under the Babylonians. And God wanted to tell that you cannot profess a different religion and practice a different religion. The religion which you profess has to be practiced in your personal, in your family, in your social and in your national life as well. And this dual standards or double standards of life or the hypocritic life of the people really angered God. And because of this, God led them into exile. Now when they were in Babylonian exile, away from the temple, away from all the rituals, away from the sacrifices, away from their own nation and a foreign land, some of the festivals they were celebrating, but it was just a tradition. Because they were in exile under King Nebuchadnezzar, and all the people, but they, they felt that they are not in their own land, and definitely they were waiting that one day they will go back to our lands. In the midst of all these things, Ezekiel prophesies that the city of Khan. The city of Khan was a Babylonian colony, colonized in 586 to 573 BC. For 13 years they were colonized. And Ezekiel prophesied against the prince of Kai. Rather, instead of prince, he was prophesying against the whole administration of the city of Kai. And I felt that this prophecy is very much close to our present situation that we are facing uh, COVID-19. And also, before facing COVID-19, what was the opposition? So before understanding or going into the text, let us understand who the Prince of Tyre was and what were the sins of Tyre. Tyre was the leading city of Phoenicia during much of the first millennium before Christ. And Tyre is located off the coast of southern Lebanon on a small island. Of its two harbors, the northern, that is Sidonian, is an excellent natural anchorage, and because of that, it was once upon a time a very prominent harbor. While the southern, that is Egyptian, was a southern one, was, which was Egyptian harbor, was protected by jetties constructed by land bridges. And the city was on the east coast of the Mediterranean Sea, one and a half mile away from the sea coast. 
Behind the city, there were very beautiful and huge mountains filled with teak wood, pine wood, cedar, and they used to have a huge business of wood. And the building of ships through this wood was one of the main businesses. Even during, if you go back to the Old Testament, even during King David's time, King Hena supplied with cedar wood and craftsmen. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 11, and 1 Chronicles chapter 14, verse 1, 22 and 4. We are not reading these verses, but definitely I read the references. King Hiram became more closer to King Solomon during the building of the temple. In the trade agreement, he gave them cedars, pine wood, and other different kinds of wood, and also the metals. And in return, Solomon gave him wheat and olive oil. You will find this in 1 Kings chapter 5 verse 2 and 2 Chronicles chapter 3, chapter 2 verse 3 to 16. And not only that, there were beautiful skilled workers, the craftsmen, the metal workers and the wooden workers, the carpenters, the very skilled craftsmen who assisted even in the building of the construction of the Solomon's temple, which we find in 1 Kings chapter 7, verses 13 to 16, and onwards. From the beginning, we find that this city of Tyre, they had a very, very good business. Right from the beginning, they had good business with other nations. And during Ezekiel's time, Ethelbert II was a ruler, or he was ruling the city of Tyre. And that's why he's not just addressing King Ethelbert II, but also the whole administration or the government of the city of Tyre. And this is also questioning the principles of business on which they were becoming prosperous. If you see Ezekiel 27, you will find or understand how richly the city was blessed and how in almost every realm of the business, because of the national wealth, they were into business with so many different countries. The whole chapter 27 speaks about the business relations with different nations they had and what the national wealth they had. But one thing went wrong with them. When they were very prosperous, everything was going on good with them. They thought that they bought out all the prosperity and the success which they had is because of their strength, because of their own wisdom, because of their own business policies, and they considered themselves as false. So the first thing which I want to bring today is they forgot that all the blessings are because of God's promises. The prosperity, the success, everything whatever we have, it's God's promise. God has promised that I will give you all the bounties of the life and God keeps his promise. God has promised that I will make your land fruitful and that is how you get the trees and the plants and the animals and all the wealth which we have. God promises us that all the natural wealth and all the wealth which, because of which we become prosperous is because of Him, that will be for God. God tells us that the wisdom and the strength I give in your hands and legs and your mind which you through which you earn the livelihood or become you become strengthened and you earn lots for yourself, it's because I give you strength. These things were forgotten by the people. One thing was they were thinking that because they are religious, they are pious, they are getting all the blessings. Unfortunately, that was not true because God will bless even when we are not really even when they are not, when they really do not deserve all those blessings. Secondly, all the success and prosperity is because of God's blessing as He has promised us. And unfortunately, it is the people of time. They thought that it is their own wisdom, it is their own wise decisions or economic policies that they are becoming rich and rich 
to the extent that they may consider themselves as God. And that's where people of Tyre, or also the people of Israel who were working in this colonized place, they were questioned, and they were also questioned, the whole city was questioned. And here the Lord questions them in verse 21, 28 verse 1, it says, Because your heart is proud, and you have said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of the gods, in the heart of the seas, Yet you are but a mortal and no God. Though you compare your mind with the mind of God, you are indeed wiser than Daniel. No secret is hidden from you. By your wisdom and your understanding, you have amassed wealth for yourself and have gathered gold and silver into your treasures. By your great wisdom and trade, you have increased your wealth and your heart has become proud in your wealth. Your heart has become proud and evil. Just before we entered into COVID-19 phase, entered into lockdown, just before facing this disease, exactly the same situation we were in. We were also very much proud of our wisdom, of our material wealth, of our knowledge, our science, our technology our developments in the field of artificial intelligence. We did not realize that all the knowledge comes from God. This is a revelation from God. When we were attaining, or rather even now, when we are attaining high places and reaching heights in science and technology, we have the question, God, does God really exist? Does really God has intervention or can it intervene in our lives, in a personal and a family or a national lives? There are many people who are questioning, does God exist? Many times we start playing God by trying to create everything and anything in the lab through genetic engineering and artificial intelligence and also through so many ways. We are able to create light in the labs and we start thinking that my mind is almost equal to God's mind. When we amass our health, we become proud. We think that we have everything because we, we have gained it through our own strength. But God is questioning us, okay, you have gained this amassed wealth for yourself, but through what? To what principles? If I have to speak about these people, God is directly telling the city of Tyre. And in verse 16, he says, In the abundance of your trade, you will fill violence and you sin. So I cast you as a profane thing from the mountain of God, and the garden cherub drove you out from among the stones of fire. Your heart was proud because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I expose you before the kings to feast their eyes on you. And one of the enemies he says, God says, by the multitude of your iniquities or the sins, in the unrighteousness of your trade, you profane your sanctity. Okay, you have earned the business, but the means were unrighteous. If we have to speak on international level, we all know how the first world countries exploit the third world countries. If we have to speak all the economic policies, whether it is in the uh, US or whichever powerful countries are there, all the economic policies are always at the cost of the third world nations. The ecological crisis which comes, it's always the third world nations has to pay the price for the first world nations. There are so many things, issues involved that I will not go directly into it. Even if we come at the national level, what was even when 
when we are in the, our present government, when we are talking about economic growth, how, how we are trying to get economic growth? By encouraging the capitalist, the industrialist, and snatching away the lands of the farmers and the uh, Adivasis and the tribals, the forest lands are snatched away, the farm, farm lands are snatched away in the name of the development. And God questions these economic policies and God questions how, how did you amass the wealth? How you are trying to gain? What are your economic policies? Whether are they exploiting the weak and the poor people? And the labor classes. COVID-19 has seen a great, great surge of the pathetic situation of all the workers. They migrated from the villages. Today we say they migrate, they are not the locals. But they are the ones who build our cities. They are the ones who have built our homes, our apartments, our buildings. They are the ones who have built our industries. They are the ones who are producing through our industries. The skilled laborers, everything. And when they did not have a job, they, they would just change out of their workplaces and they were on the roads just trying to reach homes. So many lost their lives. And God seen, God has seen this injustice towards the poor. God has seen how the rich have exploited the poor. The income, the income generating projects have always snatched poor people's lands and the lives because of which God wants to tell us. Today God wants to tell us through this COVID-19 that when you were talking about big economic gains through the industries, what your essential need is only food and clean water. And that is what the farmer produces for us. Once again, he has made us to realize, God has made us to realize that you cannot survive with the cars, you cannot survive with your laptops, you cannot survive with all other things, but you can definitely serve. You only survive to the food which is produced by the land. God made us to realize what our true need is through this situation. God, once again, questions our national policies, our economic policies. God judges our labor policies. God judges our nation always from the poor people's perspective. Through all the Bible, all the prophets, and also in the book of law, God's judgment always came from the poor people's side. God has never been the unjust powerful people or unjust power structures. And the sins, different places, sins have been told. I just want to give an example of uh, book of Amos chapter 2 verses 6 to 8, it talks about what kind of sin the people of Judah and why they, they will be punished because of the sin. And it here says, For three transgressions of Israel and for four I will not evoke the punishment, revoke the punishment. Because they sell the righteous for silver, that means there is no justice, and the needy for a pair of sandals. They who trample the head of the poor into the dust of the earth and push the afflicted out of the way, father and son go into the same girl so that my holy name is profane. They lay themselves down beside every altar on garments taken in pledge. And in the house of their God they drink wine, what it finds they impose. But all these sins are exploited from the poor people. The needy people, most of the time, the rulers, the zamindars, have trampled or made the people bonded labor in their farms. Even the garments have been taken when they are not able to pay back what they are supposed to pay back as an interest. They are never able to come out of the vicious circle of paying the principal amount and all the time they will remain as bonded laborers. And the sins which have been committed against the girl child, against the women, 
cannot be forgotten by God, and God has punished us through this aspect. God also wants to remind us that the sins of all the against all the poor or the labor classes will never be forgiven. And because of this, God brings us to the justice. And through this, even before this entering into it, they were fighting and we take so many people in the name of religion, lynch them for what they eat. So many young lives have been lost in the name of religion. The CA and RC, just before it, it uh, was COVID 19, we call this as a respite from that struggle. And God judges all these things and God entered them. And today, God wants us to rethink our role as a church. God was asking Ezekiel, who will stand in the gap? And God wants today, we who are Christian believers, to stand in the gap, to speak for the voiceless, to speak for the justice and truth against the injustice meted against the poor people, the laborers and the woman and the child. God does not want us just to worship God and go back to our comfort zones. But God wants to remind us that our worships are to be practiced in the secular world as well. God wants us to respect and repent for the sins, not just our own personal sins, but also the social and the national sins. And God's word says, if my humble, if my people turn unto me and humble themselves and repent from the sins and come back to me, I am the Lord God to forgive their sins and heal their land. Today we cannot say that we are not the ones who are doing injustice, but the government and the bureaucracy and all other people. But it is also a responsibility to stand up for the people. We cannot be silent spectators. This is also considered as a sin when we become silent spectators to the injustice happening around us. Let us listen to God's voice and be a people who not only pray on the knees, but also stand for people and do whatever is needed at the people. May God bless God and help you that your life is right and also your personal, family, social and national life will not have double standards but have same standards and will be in the same life inside and outside our living spaces. We got this one. Friends, in response to what we have heard this morning from God, shall we at this time sing a beautiful hymn? The words of the hymns are so powerful. It says, once to every man and nation comes the moment to decide in the strive of truth with falsehood for the good or evil side. Some cause God's new Messiah offering each the bloom or blight and the choice goes forever. Tis the darkness and the light. Shall we at this time sing this wonderfully worded hymn as a response and prayer to God. Hymn number 242 from the Methodist hymnal. Shall we rise and sing 242.
us look to God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, O oh God, for this bright morning. This wonderful morning, O oh God, that you have added. The very breath that you have given, O oh God. We thank you, O oh Father, for our very lives. The life in abundance in Jesus Christ that you have given to us. And gracious God, this morning, we thank you, O oh God, for speaking to each one of us. We thank you, O oh God, for your word, which is like a two-edged sword, which cuts us through and through which prunes us, which edifies us, which encourages us and which uplifts us to take on the, just, the dusty parts of our life to be a blessing for your people and to the extension of your kingdom. We especially thank you, O God, for speaking to each one of us. And this morning, O God, we want to commit our very lives into your hands and pray, O God, that you would use our life for your glory. Father, this time we want to thank you for giving us this privilege and pray, O oh God, that you would bless us and continue to use us for your glory. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. At this time, shall we receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance and give you his peace. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the blessings of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of us, both now and forevermore. Amen. we like to thank each one of you for joining us in the virtual worship service and uh, it's our prayer that God would continue to bless each one of us that we in turn would be a blessing to God's people uh, like to thank uh, all of you for joining in this worship service we especially like to thank uh, Miss Simi Charles for keeping us in tune in singing of praises and hymns to God's glory. We'd like to thank Mr. Sapnil Pawar for enhancing the worship service through recording and I'd like to thank Henry for editing. Again, thank you one and all for God's glory. Thank you. <laughs>